member of the steering committee. I'm just so happy to see so many of you here. When we were starting this off, I don't know, six months, 12 months ago, and thinking about having this inaugural patient summit, we thought, well, would anybody show up? And now we're, we had to worry about whether we would have enough seats in the room for all of you. So this is, this is such a treat that all of you are here and, and, and welcome. And I hope that this session is gonna be as informative as the other sessions are. I mean, just what a great program. I am tasked with telling you about alternative therapies. And we got a lot of interest in this topic as well as uh, the topics that are my uh, other speakers will speak about too. Financial disclosures, I am a consultant with some of the companies uh, uh, in our field. The most important disclosure here is that what you've heard throughout the session and what you'll hear throughout the rest of the sessions are that the only proven therapy for glaucoma is to lower your intraocular pressure. And some of the things I'll talk about relate to that as well, but just wanna make it clear that there's nothing else that's really proven, and we hope someday there is, that will be neuroprotective or longer in the future stem cells to regenerate optic nerve and, and your vision. But right now, the only thing that is proven is to lower your intraocular pressure by medications or whether it's by laser or by surgery. The outline for my talk will be, we're gonna think about and, and talk about these other interesting aspects, marijuana, ginkgo, memantine, which is a drug that's approved, but for other indications, acupuncture, meditation, and blood pressure elevation, right? Why would, you, why would we do blood pressure elevation? But we'll talk about that too, whether you wanted to have more salt in your diet. And one of my fellows uh, wrote this up, wrote up a lot of the things related to lifestyle and, and environmental factors. So if you want to look that up, a lot of what I have to say is in uh, what my fellow had written up as a publication. Let's start with marijuana. I think we got the most questions even before, you know, the session about, uh, about marijuana. And yes, overall, it does lower eye pressure. Research has been done back to the 60s and 70s. Overall, it does lower eye pressure. Its active ingredient, uh, because there's many active ingredients, is the THC that is in marijuana. Here are some of the downsides. It only lasts for about three hours. Its half-life is very short. We're talking about you use it, it makes the pressure go down, but you know, half an hour, one hour, it starts going down. So is it really practical to be smoking marijuana basically all day long or eating those special brownies? <laughs> I know, I, I, as you can tell, the downsides are there's really, there's some, there's some mood effects on you, there's gonna be some cognitive effects, so maybe you may not even remember to make, smoke that next weed, you know? <laughs> That's gonna be a problem with medications. Uh, it also lowers your perfusion pressure, it lowers your blood pressure is what I'm saying, and that actually can be a bad thing as I'm gonna talk about at the end of my talk. Low blood pressure is not necessarily good for glaucoma, it may be bad for glaucoma, of course the addictive side effects as well. And so the American Academy's stance on marijuana is very simple. They do not recommend it as a treatment for glaucoma. So if you're just wondering what's the bottom line is, we as ophthalmologists do not believe it's a good treatment for glaucoma. There are better treatments for glaucoma as we've heard you know, this morning. Uh, and also marijuana has all those side effects I was telling about. So is it really justified uh, at the levels that you would need to lower your eye pressure to have those type of side effects, including neurologic side effects, cognitive side effects. Ginkgo biloba, we got some questions about ginkgo biloba, and this has been studied for thousands of years, actually, not for glaucoma necessarily, but it's been used for other aspects and has a lot of different effects. Some of you may be taking ginkgo already. I know some of the questions in here were, you know, should I continue to take my ginkgo? It's, you know, it's this herbal medicine that is from a Chinese origin, and it's the last surviving member of this sort of early order of earliest trees that was out there, so a lot of history with ginkgo, and there's a lot of bioactive compounds in there. We're not sure which exactly relate to possibly glaucoma or to neuroprotection for, you know, keeping your brain really functioning well, but there's a lot of uh, active compounds in there. And these are, these are some of the classes here, which are, there's a lot of flavonoids, which you find in tea and coffee, lactones also, which are antioxidants. The same thing about the, the cyanides, the cyanidins, I should say, not cyanide. Um, and then there's other compounds as well. Please do not take cyanide for glaucoma. <laughs> These are uh, the potential eff efficacy f uh, for ginkgo biloba. Of course, all of you know that it's also being thought of as a, as a, as a treatment or a uh, herbal therapy for Alzheimer's, even for stroke, for other vascular diseases as well, and autoimmune diseases as well. Just the list, laundry list goes down very long, and the mechanisms of action include antioxidant activity, mitochondrial preservation, so that's a good thing, and prevents apoptosis, which is a breakdown and death of your cells, and may increase blood flow, including preventing 
clot formation. What that means is thinning out your blood, but that could also be a side effect because if you're at risk for hemorrhagic stroke, a, a, a stroke from a bleed, that may be something that you should not take uh, ginkgo for. You should not take it if you have that risk. So what is some of the evidence for glaucoma? I'm gonna show you both sides of the coin. I really don't have a strong feeling about it, but I will tell you that uh, there are studies, this is probably the most famous study in our ophthalmology literature about this from, from years ago, almost decades ago, which there was an improvement. So those numbers that you see circled there from the study in ophthalmology showed that the, the number that was baseline was higher than it was after you took ginkgo. That's the visual field test that we were talking about that all of you love. And that smaller number reflects an improvement in the visual field. So you're thinking, yay, you know, I'm gonna take ginkgo biloba and my visual field's gonna get better. Well, and they crossed this over. So it was a well done study relatively, but there's also another explanation for this, which is when you take ginkgo, there probably are some brain effects and you're probably more alert and you're probably doing your visual field better. That would probably be the better explanation for why there seemed to be an improvement in this small study of patients. Here's another study, this is from Korea, where they looked at normal tension glaucoma. That was, that's been mentioned in the whole symposium as well. That's one of the hardest to treat because the pressure's already normal or low. It's hard to get that pressure of 18 down to 10, you know, to keep you from progressing glaucoma. Sometimes we have to get it down to eight. So this is that type of uh, population in which they retrospectively look back and said, hey, does this, did this help after patients took ginkgo biloba? And it seemed to, be less visual progression, you know, field progression uh, in these patients. Uh, ginkgo biloba is very popular in Korea, for example. Here's another study that was done in China that looked at the same topic. They did it prospectively, though. They put people on ginkgo and said, hey, do they have less progression of their visual field and maybe changes in their contrast sensitivity? This study found that there wasn't an association. There wasn't an, a benefit, that is. And there's numerous studies. These are just a handful of studies. So basically, the jury is still out about ginkgo biloba. So I do sometimes in my patients who, you know, the normal tension glaucoma and they have pressures that are very low and they're still progressing. I, I might mention this because the, we're, we're both, the patient and me, are searching for ways that we can, you know, uh, stave off their glaucoma and blindness. So we might think outside the box in those kind of situations. Again, a warning about bleeding uh, predisposition with this drug. Memantine, you may not have heard of, and I was part of the Allergan's clinical trial. This was really the only FDA clinical trial to look at something neuroprotective for glaucoma. It was done years ago. I was very happy to be part of it, still happy to be part of it, even though it did not show that it worked, is the bottom line. So this is a drug that's available. In fact, some of my patients still continue to want to be on it, so they, after the study, so they purchased the, you know, the available uh, formulation, which is, it's been approved for dementia in the United States and Europe. It's also approved for Parkinson's. It does have neurologic side effects as a neurologic drug because it theoretically protects the ganglion cells or the nerve cells from dying. That's basically the purported mechanism. So the phase three trial in the United States, unfortunately, basically didn't show that either dose helped, you know, uh, stave off glaucoma compared to placebo. So obviously didn't meet its endpoint or was not approved. Disappointment, I hope that doesn't stop our other companies or Malagan from continuing to pursue neuroprotection. I don't think it will, uh, but that's really gonna be the future of glaucoma, right? Is perhaps protecting the optic nerve. Acupuncture, does having those needles stuck in you help? I think this is the best study. There's a bunch of studies, not very many, but there's a bunch of studies, most of them like, well, let's take a look at a few patients and see if the pressure goes down. And some of them do show that the pressure goes down, but this is really one of the best studies uh, by UCLA, uh, my colleagues at UCLA, where they looked at eye pressure, they looked at whether it had any effects on visual field and the optic nerve, and they did two types of acupuncture. These were non-eye-related points, mostly along the legs, as you see there, and the ones that were related to eye-related acupuncture points included areas around the eye as well as the leg. The take-home point is, is that they did not find any overall effect on eye pressure on your visual function or your nerve tissue. So the unfortunate thing is that it's a negative study. In fact, the eye pressure slightly increased after each session uh, of acupuncture, and the blood pressure went down, which again sounds like a good thing, but maybe for glaucoma, not such a good thing because uh, we don't want low blood pressure in glaucoma. Pressure. Yeah, this was acupuncture, though. I looked at that as well, and, and there's nothing solid that shows that acupressure is really that beneficial for glaucoma, but you're right, I, I looked at that as a, as a possible thing. How about this? Now this, I'm gonna start getting into more positive things as I end my talk. 
How about meditation? There were some questions about stress, so indirect questions about meditation. These are fairly recent studies from my colleague in India, Dr. Dada, who's at a major institution in India. Basically, does mindfulness meditation help with glaucoma? Well, he showed that it reduces intraocular pressure. We're gonna see that. And we, he also looked at these stress biomarkers and these factors that may in fact be correlated or be part of the pathway for more stress on your optic nerves, as well as factors that may actually improve your optic nerve as well. And so we're gonna look at the data here. Uh, this is just the randomization that happened. So it was a, it was a well done study, you know, where you, you did 45 people went into the meditation group, 45 people were remained as controls, did not get meditation, and let, let's look at the outcome. A lot of data up here, but the, the data up at the upper left-hand column is the eye pressure, and you can see that it went down for the group, the light gray group, which was, in terms of the eye pressure, significant reduction in your eye pressure of several points. And the control group did not have any change, so it was well-controlled study. And if you look at the, the rest on that top row there, those are factors that are related with, those are those are good factors. Those are ones that may, in fact, relate to neuroprotection, like uh, a nerve growth factor there, the BDNF, uh, and as well as endorphins. And so those went up with meditation. The middle row are factors that are associated with stress, like cortisol, and some other factors that are associated with inflammation and stress. Those went down compared to baseline as well as controls. And then the bottom line are, uh, those are measures of quality of life. So you want those scores to go up and you can see with the, with the light gray bars, those went up with meditation. May not be related to glaucoma directly, of course, but I think it'll make you feel better if you meditate. So I have no problems recommending meditation to all of you. I don't think there's any side effects. Maybe you might feel it's a waste of time, but actually I think, uh, I think it would be a good thing overall, positive for your health. And so the take home points, it's at least in this study and another study of his, lowers eye pressure, lowers the levels of those uh, stress mediators and improves levels of uh, supportive mediators and better quality of life. The last topic we'll talk about is perfusion pressure. And just to let you know what that means, it's basically in a qualitative sense, it's the difference between your blood pressure and your eye pressure. So you can think of it as a surrogate for your blood pressure. So basically, is high blood pressure better, higher blood pressure, lower blood pressure better? It used to be thought of that higher blood pressure was a bad thing. It's usually a bad thing for everything in general, right? Stroke and, and heart disease and other, other diseases of your body. But actually the neuro paradigm from many studies, good studies, population-based studies, show that low blood pressure and ocular perfusion pressure is really a risk factor for glaucoma. And in fact, some of the high blood pressure that was seen before that may have been associated with glaucoma, maybe it was over-treated or excessively treated uh, high blood pressure, and uh, Dr. Williams talked about that as well, that you know, she'll be calling up her you know, internist to say, hey, can you, can you back off on you know, that aggressive treatment of the blood pressure? And so I highlight these two studies because I think they're pro probably two of the best studies looking at the association of blood pressure, low blood pressure, and glaucoma. Barbados is a large population study. The EMGT is a, is a very well done and, and large study looking at glaucoma and its progression. So for the Barbados eye study, where they looked at uh, prevalence of glaucoma, incidence of glaucoma, how many people got glaucoma, here's the data. The circled numbers are the relative risk. That means how many times you know, risk is there for having glaucoma or getting glaucoma if you have low systolic blood you know, perfusion pressure, low diastolic perfusion pressure, and then there's a mean perfusion pressure as well. Again, indirectly a measure of kind of the blood pressure. Well, they it basically doubled your risk if you had low perfusion pressure of your optic nerve. And the EMGT looked at it from a different perspective. If you had glaucoma, like many of you have, does it help in terms of preventing that, or does it increase your risk to have low perfusion pressure? And the answer is yes, this was a statistically significantly increased 42% increase in your relative risk. And so for blood pressure, what can you do about it though? We have a lot of treatments for high blood pressure, but we don't have very many good treatments, except maybe if we really scared you, maybe we, you know, your blood pressure might go up. But the medical way of it doing that probably would be through salt intake. That's probably the more, um, and so actually some of my colleagues, sometimes myself included, but this would be only appropriate in patients who have pathologically low blood pressure, by the way. So that usually in the studies uh, was 90 over 60 or lower. Uh, then you would say, and we do, we see PEM patients who have very low, typically younger women tend to have lower blood pressure and into that a pathologic range. 
And so the summary of the current treatment is really still directed at eye pressure. Alternative therapies we've discussed, and I've highlighted the two that I think may be promising. Uh, I certainly have no problems recommending meditation to you, even if it doesn't work, it's probably good for you. And uh, blood pressure elevation, again, only if appropriate, done in, in conjunction with your, your ophthalmologist and, and what he feels in your specific case. Thank you very much.